Meanwhile, the U.S. has blacklisted 28 Chinese entities for their alleged role in the human rights abuses against the Uyghur Muslim community in the Xinjiang province of China. The organizations have been put on a so-called entity list, which bars them from buying products from U.S. companies without prior approval from Washington. One of the world's largest maker of surveillance equipment is among those who have been targeted. In addition to this, Xinjiang's Public Security Bureau is on the list, along with 19 other smaller government agencies. China has not issued any comment on the U.S. decision. However, this is not the first time that the U.S. has placed Chinese groups under a trade ban. In the month of May this year, the Trump administration added Huawei to the entity list because of security fears over its products. Various human rights groups have said that Beijing is severely persecuting mostly Muslim Uyghurs in detention camps in Xinjiang. China, however, has called these detention camps vocational training centers to combat extremism. Our correspondent Patrick Falk gets you the latest in this report from Beijing. Take a look. Right, it is a little bit of a departure from what we've seen in the past. The eight companies, the companies specifically that have been blacklisted, includes Height Vision and Zhejiang uh, Dahua, and they've been accused by the U.S. of being uh, implicated in human rights abuses against Muslim minorities in far western China. And if you look at uh, what Trump's strategy has been up to now, these sorts of moves have not targeted uh, companies for this reason. This is the first time and marks a shift in the White House's uh, stance in these sorts of things, perhaps, because it's the first time that uh, companies have been t targeted on the grounds of human rights ab abuses. In the past, companies that have been on the end of this sort of action, and Huawei, of course, has seen uh, these sorts of measures being taken against it. It's been on the grounds of national security. So, again, this perhaps does mark a, a shift in, in Washington's stance and perhaps is a, a shift in strategy by the White House to put a pressure on China. Away from China, the United Nations may just run out of money by the end of this month. According to UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, the international body is currently running at a deficit of nearly $230 million. This was mentioned in a letter addressed to the 37,000 employees at the United Nations Secretariat. Guterres said that some unspecified additional stopgap measures would have to be taken to ensure salaries and entitlements are paid. Guterres said, and I quote over here, Member states have paid only 70% of the total amount needed for our regular budget operations in 2019. This translated to a cash shortage of $230 million at the end of September. We run the risk of depleting our backup liquidity reserves by the end of the month. Unquote. Guterres has also mentioned postponing conferences, meetings and restricting official travel to cut down the costs. Given the current situation, the international body could go broke by the end of October and the Secretary General had earlier asked the member states to increase their contributions to avoid cash flow problems but the members refused. The United Nations operating budget for 2018-19 is close to 5.4 billion dollars with the United States contributing 22 percentage of it.